Welcome back to another beautiful episode of An Adoption Story. From me connecting with my birth family to creating an incredible community worldwide for adoptees, I'm now helping more adoptees share their stories and share their experiences. And with this series, adoptees have been connecting with their family links using MyHeritage, a platform that helps adoptees learn about their past, learn about their family trees, and connect more with their identity. For all of us, no journey is the same, but we all share that one thing in common, adoption. And for this story, I am here in Milan, Italy, where I'm meeting 25-year-old Marina. She was adopted near the age of two years old from Crimea by her Italian parents. With growing up here in Italy, she has always held close her Italian culture within the family but also knew that there was a background of her beginnings of her life that she wanted to learn more about. This is her story. My story begins in Crimea, actually in 1997, and then I came here in Italy in September 1999, and then I turned two years old, yeah, in November of wow. the same year. Do you have any memories of your time in Crimea? No, I mean, it's something that, I don't know, sometimes made me sad, probably because I didn't have anything to attach to. Yeah. I always knew that I was adopted, that I came from Crimea, so I knew that I had, like, a family there. Marina's story begins in the small historical town of Stari Klim, a small town that's just near the coast of the eastern Crimea Peninsula. And when she was born there, she was then placed into an orphanage in Araway, in the city of Simferopol. For her parents, they adopted Marina right before she was about to celebrate her second birthday. With her being so young, she may not have memories in Crimea, but she still remembers those vivid early childhood memories in Italy. Actually, I still remember the day my mom told me that I was adopted. And it's kind of a funny story because she sat down and she said, uh, hey, uh, I wanted to tell you something, you know, me and your dad, we are not your biological parents, but you know, we are your parents and you were adopted. And I just looked at her and then I said, oh, but I knew that. I didn't grow up, like my first two years in Crimea were there. You know, when we are little, probably we, are more aware than of course. we remember, actually. And yeah, that was my answer. And then they just always, you know, told me about their time there in Crimea, how they got there because they stopped first in Kyiv and then they came in Crimea because in Kyiv they had to do some paperwork. paperwork. Yeah. How long did the adoption process take for your parents? Actually, not that long. I feel it was less than a year, something like that, even because there was this uh, lawyer that they met uh, a couple of years back, I guess, and he was from Romania, and his wife, I believe, was from Crimea. Yes. And he told them, oh, you know, there are uh, children in Ukraine that are up for adoption. It's kind of easy process, fast, so uh, you can try and, you know, you can try to adopt there. And so my parents took the chance and actually it was pretty fast for what I know. My parents already adopted a kid, you know, uh, a child, uh, my brother, and he was adopted from Romania. For Marina's parents, before Marina herself was adopted, they had already adopted her brother Alessandro from Romania. And with the help of a lawyer who was linked to the adoption of her brother, her parents after then began the process of adopting Marina from Crimea. And after she was adopted to Italy, she then started to adjust to a new way of life. With her picking up the pieces from an early age, with learning about where she came from, she also felt a connection with other family friends who were also from Eastern Europe. Just everything went fine and smoothly. I, I really probably felt at home right away. I remember that we had this uh, family friend and she had, an, every summer I guess, as a guest, this young kid 
from Belarus, I believe. And I, I don't know, any time I would meet him, I was like, I don't know, I felt some kind of connection yeah, because yeah. it was like, oh, we are kind of from the same uh, place. Because, you know, I was a kid, I didn't really know, oh, yes, I knew, oh, Ukraine is a country and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and I met, you know, along the way during elementary school, also in high school, I had several classmates who were from Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and I don't know, I always felt this connection. And yeah. even because growing up, I felt that adoption was like a superpower. I was so proud of coming from Ukraine. Then when I discovered that actually I came from the peninsula, from Crimea, I was even more proud than before. And I actually lived my adoption when I was a kid in a very positive way. I thought that was a, something that made me more interesting and things like this. It stands out of the yeah. group of other children. Yes, yeah. yes. And, you know, I met, as I said, different, you know, other adopted children along the way. But the, the very strange thing is that we didn't really talk about that. Yeah. I mean, we did a bit, but never in a deep way. For Marina, with growing up around others who were from areas within Eastern Europe, including her own brother, she still took her own time and pace when it came to those questions on her birth family. As for her, there were times when fitting in came with complexities. When I was little, actually, I was a tomboy. So that was my main problem. It was the main source of feeling maybe awkward around other kids because they would maybe make a bit fun of me because of this. You know, I grew up with my brother and my cousin. Yeah. And they would always, you know, um, make fun of me or, you know, we would play together, but they were all like, them against me right. so <laughs> yeah so i had to to be more tough you know yeah but then the adoption part played you know a role that boosted my confidence you know boosted my confidence yeah for the rest i was really an open child like i would make friends very easily i really liked to uh, laugh a lot i was a very you know positive kid growing up and very, I wouldn't say adventurous, but I always loved to play outside. But I actually remember one time and now I feel very guilty when I think about that because when I was little actually I had a problem to, you know, when I felt very angry, I didn't know how to deal with my emotions. So. I would really say things that maybe would hurt people a yeah. lot. And I remember that there was this time when we had a fight with my parents. Probably was a really silly thing. But then I answered, oh, but you're not my real parents. Because of course I knew all the way that I was adopted. And you know, this highlighted this very this deep problem for me to deal with anger and thinking about that you know now that I'm I'm older I think that it's more like fear of being rejected so I reject you first and you know it's easier I don't have to deal with it so probably my answer to them in that scenario was probably because of that. There might be things that we might say as children, but I know that when we grow older, we start to get mature, we start to learn more about where you come from. The sense of rejection and identity is a big thing that we carry as well, for a lot of us. I knew, of course, what I felt, but I couldn't explain it. I didn't know why I felt that way, and then, of course, growing up, I started to understand, oh, probably I fear you know, uh, to be rejected from someone that I truly deeply care about. Yeah. But it's something that I am still discovering more and more now. 
you know, when I was little, of course, as I said, I really didn't have any understanding, true understanding of what was going on. And then I started to gain uh, more and more, I don't know, knowledge also of what what is adoption and also of how my parents lived through it. Because even in the early stages of my reconnection, everything was you know, focused on me. I always thought about me because it was like, I am the one that has been adopted, Yeah. you know, but this is actually a process that involves even other people and even my parents. So now I'm also understanding that was a tough process even for them, even though growing up, they really made us, like me and my brother, feel very comfortable with that, yeah. with the adoption process. That was like, yes, it was a special thing, but at the same time, it wasn't extraordinary in the negative way. So to they really, I think, put a lot of work into make us feel normal. Like we have a family, we are brother and sister and things like, like a this. normal childhood. Yeah. Normal upbringing. Yeah. The more we start to learn about our past, the more questions we might have. For Marina, understanding her identity has always been important to her. But it wasn't until later on during her childhood that she started to ask more questions about Crimea. And with the links through the family friend who was the lawyer who helped with her adoption, Marina then started to learn more about the history of her place of birth. Even when I was in middle school, I remember that I had this conversation with my mom uh, and she asked me if I was interested in discover more about my you know, birth parents. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm, I would like to see them, maybe a picture of them, but I'm not interested in know them or talking to them and things like this. There was this lawyer that was involved in our, like in my adoption yeah. and my brother one as well. And he had a, a wife, that she was from Crimea. And she used to visit me, and like visit us often when I was younger. And I would just speak to her. It was like, a, you know, a link with yeah, my yeah. past, with Absolutely. where I was from, yeah. you know. I don't know, I was really young and I was like in middle school, I was starting to, you know, grow my interests for, you know, towards my roots, like in the sense of getting to know more the place, how it is. I remember that, you know, in middle school, I really wasn't that good, but I remember that in geography class, which, Really, I, I really never liked that much geography, but the teacher was like, oh, you know what, we will do this thing. I will make a research about Crimea for you, and then I will test you about that. Like, I sh will share That's with good. you the papers and the research, and then I will test you with that so you can have a good mark <laughs> in my class. And I remember that for me was really important because First, I felt valued for my, you know, for my heritage, my origins. And then actually that was the first time I really read something about Crimea. And for me it was actually interesting to see that I was born in, you know, in a little peninsula. And then I, you know, now I live in another peninsula. So it's, it's this connection, this strange connection, move from a peninsula to another. As Marina started to learn more about the history of Crimea, she started to feel a closer connection to her roots. She had always wondered about what her birth parents looked like, but never got into detail with her documents until later on. Marina wanted to wait until the time was right, as she knew that with any search, you never know what you might find out. So when did you start connecting the dots with trying to search for your birth family with the little information that you had? I started actually in 2014 because I asked my parents to see my adoption papers. I never saw them, so I was really curious to 
see what was in there, which kind of information and things like this. And there I discovered my birth parents' names. So I was like to my parents, but uh, there are some names here. Why didn't, didn't you tell me anything about that? And they were like, oh, we didn't even remember <laughs> that there were names there. So I was like, oh, I have finally a starting point. You know, I have names, I can search for them. Actually, for me, it was a, a huge discovery also because I thought all my life, oh, I am Ukrainian for nationality. But then I discovered from my papers that I, I am Russian, actually. And that was a shock. <laughs> but then, you know, I started to search on YouTube. Oh, how can I reconnect with my birth family? You know, knowing names and things like this. And your video actually was the first <laughs> that came up. At the top of the list, yeah? yeah? Yeah. I mean, I saw in that period lots of videos. I saw that you went through social medias and things like this. So I tried that as well. But in 2014, nothing happened. But I guess that it's better like this because I didn't know anything about the language. So, you know... Th that was it. I just tried, nothing happened. And I must admit that I tried again and again. And then also on my adoption papers, I saw the name of the, you know, ch children house. I don't know how you Disky call Dom. it. Yes. Disky Dom, yeah. Disky Dom. So I searched it on Google Maps because I was like, I want to see how it looks like. And yes, that was everything I had at that time. But for me, it was was really a lot to process because it was like, oh, now there are real people. Beginning a search for any adoptee takes time. And with every story being different, we all have our own journey and there will be times where there can be disappointment. Also understanding that the search could be harder than we may have initially thought. Having support or someone close to you for any adoptee if they decide to go on a search is important. For Marina, though she may not have found any links the first time, it wasn't long until she decided to try again. It's always very hard in the beginning because I myself did a search too in 2009 mm. before that yeah. and I didn't find anything. I used social media and I almost gave up at that point. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we get excited, a lot of us adoptees, we want to search, yes. right? We want to look, look, look and then we go, if there's disappointment, it knocks us back. It does knock us back and we go, no, maybe we'll try again more. There must be another way. There yes. must be another way. I know for yourself, it took a few times before you started to connect more and you started searching through more social media. Yes, actually it took uh, quite a long time because it happened in very in different stages. Yeah. That was my first stage. And then I, I tried again on Facebook because I was like, oh, maybe, I don't know, they, maybe I searched, you know, I didn't search well back then. But then I started university and I decided to attend the Russian class because I knew that in Crimea they spoke mainly Russian. And then I got to meet a Ukrainian girl, uh, which is now a very good friend of mine. And she was like, oh, actually, we use other social medias. <laughs> I was like, huh, <laughs> nice to know. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she was like, oh, we can try to, to search for uh, your birth parents together. And we didn't find anything. So we used the name of the documents, of course, but we didn't find anything. Yeah. I always knew that it could happen. Yeah. I mean, but I was like, oh, but if this doesn't work, what can I do, you know? Yeah. So I just stopped for a while. And that was my second year of university. And then I... Uh, I don't know how, I was on YouTube one day and your video came up again, <laughs> randomly. Like this happened something like two years later. An, up an update. <laughs> yeah, two years later, something yeah. like that. And I was like, no, I want to try again. Yeah. And my Russian at that moment was a bit better than it was two years before. I was talking actually with my best friend 
And I was thinking and I was like, oh, but if this social media works like Facebook, it yeah. means that there are some groups in it. And because the, you know, Stary Krim, it's not a big city. Small, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a small, probably everyone know each other. So if I can find a group of, yeah. the, of the city, maybe I can find some information. I decided to look through Vikantakte and find some group uh, of my city and I found it. So I wrote them a very, actually it was a brief message. It was like, oh, I, my name is this, this and that, and I'm searching for these people. If you have any information, let me know. Uh, even because my level of Russian would allow that, just yeah. that. And then they just, I didn't know that, they just shared this message on their page. Marina reached out through a social media group, through a website similar to Facebook. This is a version of their own for those who live in Eastern European countries. It's always important to get advice first before reaching out through these websites and making sure that you have someone with you who can guide you through the language and communication. For Marina, she held hopes that this time she might get answers. I see a message on Vikantakte. I read the name and I was like, oh, this surname is very familiar because it would have been yeah. my surname, yeah. you know? I was like, maybe he's a cousin, <laughs> something like that. So I just answered to his message and he just wrote me, oh, uh, hi, did you write this message here and things like that. And then I discovered that he was my brother. And have you always known you've had siblings no. back in Crimea? You've never known? No, because in adoption paper, nothing was written about that. Even though he is older than me, really, I didn't know anything. I actually maybe thought sometimes, oh, maybe I have some siblings around the world. I was like, because I was, of course, I thought, oh, if I am adopted, if I have siblings there they are adopted too, of course. I didn't really think about that. He was like, oh, I am the son of, and he told my mother's name. I was like, oh, so it means that we are brother and sister? And he was like, eh, it looks like so. <laughs> that was the thing. And then he was like, oh, I always knew that I had a younger sister out somewhere, but I didn't really know anything more than that. It was like, oh, now I will leave you to talk with, with mom yeah. and, you know, to sort it out. And she actually would explain me more about my story and how everything happened, why I was adopted and my siblings not, because I have a biological brother who is two years older than me and an older sister. So is... you knew this only at that point? Yeah. yeah. For Marina, she has always understood that she wasn't an only child within her birth family. With her knowledge of having a sister, it took her by surprise when she found out that she also had a brother. And after the contact with him, Marina then got the chance to get in touch with her birth mother. I spoke before with my brother and then he was like, oh, I will leave the phone to my mom so she can explain you more. And so the first question was, oh, why? What happened? And she was like, oh, you know, life was very tough. We had some, you know, economic problems, which is pretty much normal. I had already two kids. Oh, I'm afraid that I will not be able to take care of you as well as I did for your brother and sister. So I thought at that time that it was better to, you know, give you for, you know, for adoption. She felt guilty about that, I would say, yeah. because then she told me that later on, when the economic situation was better, she searched for me, but she couldn't find me. Of so course. she looked for you? Yeah, but it was too late because I was already adopted. It happened something like four or five years later. Yeah, and your name would have changed too. Yeah. I was relieved, I would say, because I was like, oh, so I, this happened, but it comes from a place of love. It wasn't like a true, she really 
didn't fully give up on me because she tried to search for me later and things like that. And then when I got to know her better, I understood that she really cares. I was like, oh, it was more about circumstances than her, her will. So, and then when I got to speak with my birth brother, he's so loving and caring. So the first two weeks I was just happy. <laughs> You know, I finally had the right for my heritage yeah. because even learning Russian and seeing that for me was a struggle because it's a hard language and things like this. Sometimes I felt, oh, but, you know, I come from Crimea and I can't even, you know, learn my, my language, you know. I don't know, it made me feel less less of what it was. Marina started to grow more contact with her birth mother and learning more about her life made her understand that her birth mother's circumstances were difficult, but it also helped Marina connect more with her roots in Crimea. When it comes to any adoptee wanting to learn more about their birth family, as always, there will be questions. When I got to know my birth parents, Actually, my birth mom, because my birth dad, I don't yeah. know anything about him yet. I was like, now I have these people that are related to me. So now I have the right to be Crimean, to be from Crimea. That was the, the main point, I, I think, at that moment. And I was just happy. But then after those two first weeks, I started to really realize more and more what it's truly you know meant for me to be adopted i started to feel more the struggle of being adopted because i started to feel more like oh but what if i stayed there if i grew up there you know how your life would be different yeah you were raised here and you have great parents who yeah, raised exactly. you but of course you have that background and questions about where you come from this is where you start to build those puzzle pieces now as an adult you're building more and more and learning more and more about your birth family. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's still a bit of a struggle. I mean, I always knew that, you know, my heritage and my Crimean part lived always, you know, at the side of my life here in Italy. But then when I got to know my birth parents, it was like, oh, how can I make these things fit together because I also had these questions like, oh, I wonder what would be like to, to be there and things like this. And I think it's pretty natural to, to think about that, you know, to travel with your mind. Yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what, it's, it's all right. I have these people in my life and they love me, they all love me, and I mean my parents and then my birth family as well. And I love them as well, you know. They don't have to fit in a box, yeah. you know. And, and that, it's good to be open about it too. Yes, exactly. And that, that moment actually at the same time was a struggle for my family here. Yeah. Because, you know, it's all about identity. So when you have a, a daughter that is looking up for her heritage, sometimes it may be hard for, for them to say, oh, okay, so what is my identity now? Who I am for yeah. this person? But as I told them from the beginning, this didn't really change anything. They are my mom, my dad, my brother. Exactly, yeah. Yes. A lot of adoptive parents, they want to protect their child. Though, exactly. And they fear for the worst of what you might find out exactly. and they want to protect you. So there's a lot of fear and anxiousness with any adoptive parent when it comes to their child searching for birth family. But I understand that at the end of the day, they are your parents. Yes, exactly. But at the, you know, at the beginning, it was more of a, a struggle because I was like, oh yes, but this is a, you know, this is a moment that is very happy for me. You know, I got to finally find the answers. With any adoptee connecting with birth family, this can help close a chapter to opening a new one. Marina continues to learn more on her birth family, and with using MyHeritage, she has been able to start building her family tree. 
This is helping her with any links she continues to pick up on her birth family. It's also important to her with using this resource to learn more about her Italian side. Since she is connected with her birth family, Marina also understands that her story is also her parents. Their story can be as long as our own because sometimes the, the path that led them to take this, this choice, the adoption choice, the adoption way, can be hard. Sometimes I look around and I see in maybe some adoptees community that this focus is lost a yeah. bit. And I actually can understand why, because it's a, it's a hurtful process for some. In the community though, having that support for all of us is such an important part because a lot of us just need that support to talk to another adoptee, just like we're doing right now. Us two can relate to that. You know, I have an outcome with my birth parents, but my birth mother I don't have a great connection with. I have mm. a very difficult relationship with her. And that is the reality of a lot of people that connect with birth family. She made a very difficult decision, but I put myself in her shoes because at the time the circumstance was difficult. With my birth father, I have a great connection with him. But of course, every story is so different. Exactly. You know, I started to search for them when I was younger, when I was in high school. Yeah. And you know, thinking back about it, you know, it's probably 2021 was the best moment to, to do so, even because I was mentally in a better space. I knew a bit about the language. I wasn't a, a teenage anymore, <laughs> so. Everyone is different. Yes. For all of us adoptees, we know that all of our stories are different, but we all share that one thing in common, adoption. And for Marina, she knows that with her life here in Italy and with her background from Crimea, this is a strong point of who she is as a person. Once we start to connect with any birth family, we always grow with the time that continues on every journey. So since you have connected with your birth family, what has changed for yourself? I am even more and more curious about my, my not my personal story, but the Crimean history and things like that. So, for example, I read a lot of books. I got in contact with actually different people who live there and they are not related to my birth family at all. I was just researching more and more even because I really want to go there. So I was like, I need to choose the places that I want to visit. Yeah. I want to know more about that. Even because there is a very, there are a lot of different cultures in Crimea. It's very interesting because it's a mix. And you've started to build your family your family tree from your Ukrainian side and your Italian side? Uh, actually, Italian side, I know a bit more. And the, you know, Ukrainian side, it's still a work in progress because I don't know why, but I focused more on, on my birth family. You Absolutely. Know, yeah. yeah, but then I got to know about some relatives that are that live in Ukraine, so not in Crimea, but in Ukraine. And actually very recently, I got to message with one of them. And they are always so kind and so open. They want to know more about me. Learn about your life. Yes. With the path that we may all choose to go on, we know that there will be moments where it will be hard. We all have our own way of learning and understanding more about where we come from. Marina now studies international relations. This is helping her learn more about the unique relationships between different countries. And with her getting a spark from connecting with her birth family and culture in Crimea, she has since developed a strong interest in the different aspects between countries. With her life here in Milan, Italy, Marina continues to keep up with studying Russian keeping in touch with the birth family in Crimea, and of course, building further family tree links for her Italian side. What advice do you have for other adoptees who not only adopted out of Crimea, Russia, Ukraine, and Romania, but the world, for those who may want to search for birth family? I would say that, yes, probably try to wait for a moment <laughs> where you are more relaxed and you are in peace because this will be a very interesting journey. 
a roller coaster. So try to be prepared for it, even though you can't be so prepared. And at the same time, I would say also to keep the focus on the people that are around you and who loves you because they really, even friends, not only family, because really in my journey, they were the people that kept me grounded and, you know, gave me the strength to go, to go through it. So I would say to, you know, just remember that you are loved, even though your journey and your past is a struggle. Remember that you are loved and you have people that care about you because sometimes it's maybe easy to get lost in this hole of, you know, emotion. Yeah. And preparedness is hard to come by because you don't know how prepared you need to be. Yeah, I think try to get in the, you know, mental space that something will happen and maybe it's something that you will not expect. Just be aware of that. Absolutely. Yeah. You never know what's going to be thrown at you, exactly. good or bad. And yes. just having that support around you, like you're saying, is so important. And also putting yourself in the shoes of your adoptive parents yes, as well exactly. as yourself. Exactly. That's also a main thing because uh, for me also, when I started to realize what meant for them my adoption, it helped me to go through it and to go through it in a very positive way. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marina, for having me here. It's so great to be here in Italy and what a beautiful country it is. So thank you for having me here. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you. We all take every journey in our own time and pace. And if you want to learn more about Marina's story, please visit the links below.